Greetings to you, my dear friends, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to my channel. My dear friends, I just want to share an important prophecy given to me by God. This prophecy is about the coming of the lawlessness one, the Antichrist. God has given me some scriptures and that just blew my mind. So I'm just going to read those scriptures to you. And this, and this is what is going to take place in the near future. In uh, after the Alexander the Great, one of his descendant descendant came into power. He's known as a, a wicked ruler, and his name was Antiochus Epiphanes. His description matches the Antichrist 100%. Antiochus Epiphanes pretty much sounds like Antichrist. These scriptures I found in 1 Maccabees chapter 1 to 6 when you read chapter 1 to 6 you will get the whole picture exactly it's just like real what I am reading to you is these incidents happen in the time of this wicked ruler the same incidents going to happen when Antichrist comes. I'm reading from I'm reading from 1 Maccabees chapter 1 onwards. Some scriptures I skip. I'm just using the main ones. So you can follow if you want to, or you can look at look at it later on. And whenever, wherever the name Antiochus is mentioned, I have changed the name to Antichrist or the false Messiah. So wherever his name is was there in the scripture, so I changed to Antichrist. So that it can be, it can sound, you know, real. And here we go. It's from 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse, verse 21. And he, Antichrist, the false Messiah, entered proudly into the sanctuary. And took away the golden altar and the candlestick of light and all the vessels thereof. Therefore, there was a great mourning in Israel and every place where there were. So that the princes and the elders mourned, the virgins and young men were made feeble, and the beauty of women was changed. The land also was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. All the Jewish people were confused. The Antichrist entering Israel with great army. And the Antichrist spoke peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. 
lies. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. But the women and children took their captive and possessed the cattle. The Antichrist shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it insomuch that the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers and became strange to those that were born in her and her own children left her. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feasts were turned into mourning, her sabbaths into reproach, her honor into contempt. Moreover, the Antichrist wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. In other words, like one world order or Chipping everybody, the mark of the beast, chip every person, which is mentioned in the in Revelation thirteen. Um, yeah, so we and his persecution continues in verse forty four. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. And the Antichrist forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. 47. The Antichrist set up altars and grooves and chapels of idols and sacrifice, swine's flesh and unclean beast. 48. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. 49. To the end, to the end they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Forget the law, law of Moses. Change all the ordinances, ordinances of God. 50. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the Antichrist, he said he should die. 56. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law, I believe that is Bible, which they found, they burnt them with fire. 57. And whosoever was found with any, the book of the Testament, again, the Bible, of if any committed to the law, the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. 61. And they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that has circumcised them. Brutal. 62. Hobbit, many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. 63. Wherefore the, the rather to die that they might not be defiled with meats, and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died. 64. And there was very great wrath upon Israel, that, that's up to um, verse 64 in 1 Maccabees chapter 1 up to 64 verses so these are all the works of the Antiochus Epiphany who 
who was a wicked ruler who persecuted Jewish people in Israel in the past. The same thing, the Antichrist is going to do the same thing. Change the laws, persecute people. Yeah. So this is an exact picture, exact picture of what the Antichrist is going to do. Um, now, I'm reading from uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter 11, verse 36. The king who exalts himself, the king will do as he pleases. He will exalt and magnify himself above every god and will say unheard of all of things against the God of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what has been determined must take place. He will show no regard for the gods of his ancestors or for the one desired by woman. Nor will he regard any god but will exalt himself about them all. Instead of them, he will honor a god of fortresses, a god unknown to his ancestors. He will honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and costly gifts. He will attack the mightiest fortresses with the help of a foreign god and will greatly honor those who acknowledge him. He will make them rulers over many people and will distribute the land at a price. Matthew 24 So when, verse 15 So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel let the reader understand then let those who are in Judea Flee to the mountains. Let no one on the house stop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress unequal from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equal again. That means the suffering which is coming, the persecution which is coming, the world has never seen, never seen, nor they will see ever again. So you can't perceive. You must have seen in movies, it's a different thing, but when you see life, it's completely different. I'm reading from 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 12. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of the lawlessness is already at work. But the one who holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Who is holding? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is holding Satan. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth 
and destroyed by the splendor of his coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God for that. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And all the ways that wickedness deceive those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. This is the, another place. In the book of Revelation 13, chapter 13, 1 to 18. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like a bear's and his mouth was like a lion's mouth. And to it the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed. And the whole earth marveled as, marveled as they followed the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority, authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like the beast and who can fight against it? And the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemy, blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. 42 months. The true Messiah came. But you did not believe him. The true Messiah who was prophesied hundreds of years. He was born. The true Messiah was born of a Virgin Mary. He died for our sins. He died for our sins. He came in flesh. He rose on the third day. And is coming back. And his second coming is very near. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the breath of life. My dear friends, please share this video with others. There are many people who don't even know that we are living in the last days. They don't know. Some people will be taken by surprise. But by sharing this video, you will be doing some work in the body of Christ. It's your duty to share, to warn others. Please share this video with others. We are entering the seven year tribulation seven year tribulation we already seen a lot and we are seeing the coming of the antichrist
soon he will appear. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you all. God bless you all.